Welcome to our video tutorial on how to use Google Docs. Google Docs is a part of our package from Google that we are now using and the package is actually called Google Apps. Most of you already know that for your email and you can see this page because you saved it in either your favorites or you created a shortcut and put it on your desktop. So what we want to do first is go ahead and log into our email account like we normally do probably several times a day at this point. Then we click sign in. At that point it's going to bring us into our inbox. Now that you're in your actual inbox, all you're going to do is look at the very top above the Fort Cherry logo and you're going to see different hyperlinks. The one we're concerned about with this tutorial is called Documents. Let's simply click on Documents and this will now take us into a online basic file folder or think of it as an online documents folder like your documents on your actual personal computer. Now a lot of people have asked me, Jack, how much room does Google actually give us to store documents on here? We're actually given six gigabytes of space for each individual user. And if you think about this, if you have a one gig thumb drive, that would be six of them. Now just think, how much stuff do you have on that one gig thumb drive? Better yet, a lot of you out there are still using your 256 megabyte thumb drives. How much do you have on those? And I know it's a ton of information. So they give us six gigabytes of space. Now you might be asking, Jack, well, why is online so great? This is great because we have an online word processor, an online spreadsheet program, as well as an online PowerPoint presentation program. And it's really nice because anything you keep in here, you start it in here, and if you happen to be one of these teachers that somebody else uses your room through the day, and you might have to go to another computer in the library or wherever, it doesn't matter which uh, server you may be on, a student server or the um, administration teacher server, because these are online. So as long as you can get to a web browser and log into your email, you'll be able to get to your file folder and work on your documents without the use of your U drive or your thumb drive. Now let's just start by talking about creating new folders. Creating folders is important because we don't want everything just thrown onto our um, online drive naturally because things get kind of hard to find. If you can see I start one here called school and I have a lot of projects already started. Myself and Rebecca has been uh, kind of beta testing this for about the past uh, month now and kind of getting the, the feel for it to see how everything's actually working out. Now, I've created a lot of different documents in here. I have some, uh, there's a PowerPoint presentation. Um, these are actually uh, Word documents, that icon, and these are spreadsheets. Now, these spreadsheets, as you can see, I actually share these with Rebecca so we can collaborate on these spreadsheets. We'll talk about that in just a minute. First thing I wanted to teach you is how to create a new folder. Just click on the All Folders, right click, go to New, and Folder. And you can see up here where it says New Folder. How many people do you see on their computer? They have New Folder 1, New Folder 2, New Folder 3. It doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Let's type this, and we're going to say this is My Plans. Let's say we're going to use that for lesson plans. Once you type it, then you hit your Enter key, and it locks it in and it builds our new folder. Now we can go out, let's go ahead and create a document. Click the pull down menu, click on document. At this point our online word processing program comes up and now we can start typing our document. Now is it as full featured as Microsoft Word or OpenOffice? No. But is it functional? Absolutely. Like I said I've been doing almost uh, all my documents I've been working online just so I have easy access to these and to prove that it's actually working pretty well. So I type in here, this is my lesson plan on math. All right, so we do a lesson plan and this is just a, a, um, a tutorial 
or just a demo. This could be anything. It doesn't have to be lesson plans, whatever you want to type, whatever you may need to type in there. Let's hit save and close. Once we save and close it, we see that ah, oh, it's not under the My Plans folder. Where did it go? When you create new documents, spreadsheets, or PowerPoint presentations, they're automatically placed in items not in a folder is where they would be located. I have to bring it back up here again. Save and close. Here's the one we just created. Under I found it under documents. It should also be here. There we go. Sometimes it takes a few seconds for it to show up, but it is coming in. This is my lesson plan on math. Now we can rename that just by simply checking it. As you can see, I renamed this lesson one. This is picking up the first line of your document. Hit rename. Lesson two, and I hit the enter key. Now I want to move these two lesson plans in my plans document, in my plans folder. I'll select both of these the pull down menu and click on my plans that's where we want to put them and move to folder now we see they're no longer listed under the items in not in a folder they're listed under my plans we can just uncheck these and now they're in my plans now I talked a little bit earlier about collaborating I know a lot of you work in teacher groups and it's a nice thing to do is if you're writing up a plan for your group to be able to share that with the group and people can collaborate, add to it, uh, delete some things from it. And when you do that, myself and Rebecca found that it does maintain all the revisions. So as soon as somebody makes a change, it'll say changes made by um, so-and-so teacher and it'll have the revision right before that, um, before the change happened. So let's go ahead and click on lesson one. We're going to click on share. And if I type the first initial, you'll see that it gives me my address book, which is a very nice feature. I don't have to figure out people's names because some people have some uh, last names. It's pretty hard to, to spell, so we don't have to worry about that. As a collaborator, collaborator means they can make changes. They will be able to make changes. If you click on viewers, they will be able to view the document but not make changes. Let's allow Rebecca to go ahead and collaborate. You can type a different message down here if you wish. Um, here is my new plan. Have a look. Thanks. Now what I'll do is send an invitation. Once that invitation is sent out, what's going to happen is Rebecca will now receive an email in her inbox saying that I have a file that I would like to collaborate with her on. She clicks a link. It will take her into her Google Docs and that file will be there and it will open in a word processor so she can collaborate with us. As you can see down here, it also sorts by documents. It sorts by spreadsheets to show you if you have any spreadsheets in there as well as presentations. If you forget where a file may be kept at, just simply go up on top where it says search documents. I'm going to look for everything that has IP in it and we see that it says assigned IPs in the district and you can see right here it's shared between myself as well as Rebecca well I hope that helps you a little bit with the online documents um, that's pretty much uh, everything in as they say a nutshell um, hopefully you can use the online documents and uh, learn more about it on your own take some time thanks to everybody for being so patient with us with the change of the new email system and we're getting positive feedback and I, it's always nice to hear that. If you need any more help with it, either contact myself or contact Rebecca or drop a help desk ticket in and one of the two of us will come out and visit you. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next video.